Oh God, be gracious and bless us. It's a good way to start the new year, asking for God's blessings. And God truly blesses us in every moment. Um, it's apt to, to speak of that in reference to Our Lady, Mother of God. She is the most blessed of all women, as St. Elizabeth said, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. Um, she was the most blessed of all women. All the, the young maidens of Israel wanted that privilege of becoming the mother of the Lord, the mother of the Messiah who was to come. And uh, Mary, she being so humble, I'm sure she thought herself to be unworthy of that high privilege. And she consecrated her life from very early on to be the handmaid of the Lord. Now, the circumstances, I don't know the reason why. But anyway, uh, mm, it was taking the decision that she was to marry a noble man, a man, a virtuous man, a just man, St. Joseph. And, uh, but she remained a virgin, a consecrated virgin. So how was it then that she uh, became the mother of the Messiah? All the other young maidens were getting married and thinking that the Lord would bring about this great uh, uh, Occurrence, this great happening by the way of normal marital means. And, and Mary, well, she was a consecrated virgin. We know how it happened. She let herself be blessed by the Lord. It really was the fruit of a marriage, her conceiving the child Jesus in her womb, but not a natural marriage, but a supernatural one. No, she's the spouse of the Holy Spirit. And she was perturbed when she heard that she was going to conceive. Obviously, when a woman hears that she's going to conceive, she thinks she's going to conceive in a natural way. And the virgin was a, a consecrated virgin. And so she rightly asked, but how can this be? For I am a virgin. And so the Lord shed the light of his face upon her. And he gave her his peace, as we've just heard in the blessing uh, in the, of the first reading, the blessing of Moses, that the way that we should call God's blessing upon uh, the children of Israel. May the Lord shed his light upon you, uh, let his face shine upon you and bring you his peace. And that's what happened with the Blessed Virgin when the angel Gabriel appeared and, and gave her the great news, and she was perturbed in her spirit. But the Lord then gave her his peace, telling, him, telling her sorry, how he was going to do it, and the Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power, of the, uh, the power of the Almighty will overshadow you. And so she conceived by the Holy Spirit, saying, Here I am, the handmaid of the Lord, be it done unto me according to thy word. Uh, so we know how she became the mother of God, uh, the mother of Jesus Christ in his humanity, the humanity of God. So she is the mother of God. Uh, how did she remain then? Because at first, before being the biological mother, she was espoused to the Holy Spirit and you could say gave, conceived of the word in her heart. Now we too uh, are called to do the same. I, I mentioned last night in the adoration when, when the man came and said to Jesus, your mother and your brothers are outside. And how did Jesus respond? He says, who is my mother and who are my brothers, my brothers and sisters? Then he looked to those around him and said, here they are. These are my mother, my brothers and my sisters. Uh, those who hear the word of God and keep it, those who do the will of God, 
and my mother, my brothers and my sisters. And the woman who, who called out, you know, with great joy from the crowd, blessed the womb that bore you and the breasts that gave you to suck. And Jesus, well, he didn't correct her, but he, he completed, let's say, the, her train of thought. Because obviously she was thinking just on a purely natural level, a biological level. And it really was our lady for that sense. She was the most blessed of all women. But more so because she, more blessed rather those who hear the word of God and keep it. And no one did that more than the blessed Mary ever virgin, even though she didn't always understand it. And we get a glimpse of that from, the, from the, um, her continual attitude, let's say, which made her, no one could ever have taken that biological fact away from her that she was the mother of God. But we're talking about a maternity on a spiritual level and we can lose that when we depart from God's will. And so his life, the life of grace within us, then is not brought to its completion. But in her, it was always at its fullest and only ever growing and growing and growing and growing the life of grace within her. And how did she keep to that, let's say, state of soul where the life of grace within her was always in a continual perpetual state of growth where she was ever the mother of divine grace, the mother of God within her own soul. Well, she, as I said, she didn't always understand the divine word, no, her son, because the divine word is the, 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 the mystery of God itself, and she was a creature. And so what did she do to maintain then that divine maternity in a spiritual way, which we, in each one of us, are called to and which we are called to imitate her upon? In the gospel, when the shepherds came and they told everyone what they had heard and what they had seen with the great the, let's say, the, the angels appearing and the message they had brought to them and how they'd found it then. They heard, and it says here, as for Mary, she treasured, and she kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. And she would do the same a few years down the road when Jesus came to age and they took him to the temple and he stayed there and they went back and they, they, they lost track of him, and then they went back to the, to the temple after three days of looking for him, and they found him. And why were you worried? Did you not know that I should be in my father's house? And it says of Mary that she, they didn't understand what he meant, but she kept these things in her heart. I know the story of a man who, he was on a way of conversion. In fact, He's come into the blessing and the peace of the Lord upon his life, which meant about his conforming himself to God's holy will, came about by his Eucharistic adoration, uh, going to adoration, starting to go to silent adoration whilst at work. In, at lunchtime, he would, he would leave the, 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 his work and he would go and find the, he'd go to the Eucharistic Adoration Chapel and start spending time there in his lunch break. So that would be five minutes if it's extended to 10, 15. And at the end, after months of doing this, he would lose track of time altogether. And sometimes he'd end up getting back to work late. And he found what his heart was always desiring the peace of the Lord, which Lord's blessing. Uh, brings us to. Anyway, he says then, uh, after having found the Lord's peace, it, it would happen as it generally does happen, it frequently happens in the, in the, life, in the in life of ma marriage and in the home, where there are contradictions that arise and, there are, you know, and, and the, 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 the can, things can get heated. And he said, his wife, on, on occasion, she would her, her views and her opinions and, and insist, and, and he wouldn't be in agreement, but he wouldn't respond. He kept it so sacred within him that 
that peace that the Lord had gifted him with, he refused to let go of that peace and to respond in a prideful way, in insisting in his own ego, I'm right, you're wrong. He didn't do that. He kept silent. He wanted to hold on to his peace that the Lord had given him. And he said in so doing, afterwards, then the situation, mysteriously enough, found its peace and, and it was solutioned without him having to lose that which was the most precious thing that he had, uh, being in conformity with the Lord's blessing, with the peace that he had given him. And so we can learn a lot from that. If we want to be in the blessing of the Lord and to receive his peace, then what did Mary do in those moments when she didn't understand? She kept these things in her heart and she trusted in the Lord. She trusted in his blessings. She trusted that he is the Lord of all, of all story, the Lord of her life, the Lord of our life, and everything is in his hands. Trust in him. That is the solution. And in so doing, we will be in conformity with the Lord's will, and we will ever live in his peace, even though we don't always understand, and even though we might feel perturbed, Still trust in the Lord, as Julian of Norwich says, and all is well, and all is well, and all manner of things will be well. Uh, trust in the Lord. So we can ask our Heavenly Mother now that the Lord's blessing will come upon us, that he will shine his face upon us and be gracious to us and bring us his peace and that we, we, we may remain in it always. Amen.